chocolate in the morning. I mean, it literally sounds like the opposite of what you're supposed to do. But there was a study that was published in Current Nutrition Reports. Pretty interesting stuff. It was a 19 trial study looking at 454 people over the course of two to 12 weeks. What they were measuring in this particular study is something called flow-mediated dilation. What that is, is when blood is flowing through an artery and it registers that there is some flow of blood, how quickly and how much does the vessel dilate? Now, exercise can obviously induce this, but just when you get up in the morning and you just start your day, like what happens with blood flow? It's obviously really important, like tissue perfusion, like is blood getting into a muscle? Does it help actual muscle tissue? Well, bottom line is they looked at a lot of data and they found that when there was cocoa or dark chocolate consumption, there was more than a 2% increase in flow mediated dilation. Now that's not just a 2% increase in blood flow, it's a 2% increase in flow mediated dilation. So a 2% increase in how it dilates at that particular point. And it was even more so in people that had cardiovascular disease where they may have had some arterial stiffness. Why is this such a big deal? Because if you have more blood flow getting somewhere, you enhance every other positive thing that you're trying to change. Okay, if you're taking steps to improve insulin resistance and you also have more blood flow, then that's more insulin that can get to where it needs to go. That's more glucose that can get to where it needs to go. Now I'm gonna jump ahead to another study that was relatively new that was looking at actual like muscle quality, like tissue and what chocolate would do there, which is wild. Now this study was published in Circulation Research and it was really thorough. It was a six month study where they measured older individuals that were dealing with peripheral artery disease. Now this still applies to a regular person. They were just looking in a more extreme case and they were doing what is called a six minute walking test. How far could they walk in six minutes? And what they did is they looked at cocoa consumption that had the polyphenols and the epicatechins and the theobromine, all the good stuff, or placebo that tasted and looked like chocolate. And they would have them test in both the short term and over a six month period, just how their walking improved. Even in the short term, they were able to clear significantly more meters in a six minute period, acutely after having chocolate, which makes sense, maybe there's some caffeine, stuff like that compared to placebo. But over the long term, there was more distance covered. So they got continually better by having just a tiny bit of chocolate. But that's kind of cool, that's somewhat objective. But then they took a muscle biopsy, and this is where it gets interesting. They found that there were increases in what is called mitochondrial cytochrome C oxidase. This is pivotal, extremely important for like turnover and for mitochondria to be able to produce energy. So when we have a concentration increase in this, it probably has to do with the antioxidants and the cocoa actually getting into the tissue and changing the muscle tissue enough to be able to affect the mitochondria. Huge by just having a small amount of cocoa. Additionally, they saw that there was an increase in what's called capillary density, which means that there were more capillaries in a given area and they were higher quality. And subsequently, there was more tissue perfusion. What does this mean to a regular person that maybe doesn't have peripheral artery disease? When I wanna build muscle, I want tissue perfusion. I want more cocoa, right? I want this because I want blood to get into the muscle and I want that tissue perfusion. When I had Chris Duffin, who's a well-known mechanical engineer that is like an exercise scientist, that's what he was talking about. Like one of the biggest things is that tissue quality, being able to get blood into the tissue pumping blood in there. That's why we do things like BFR. So chocolate can induce nitric oxide, but this can actually result in more blood getting into the areas that it needs to get. Hugely important. And then when we look at the blood pressure side of things, there was a study published in Frontiers in Nutrition. It was a randomized control trial. In this particular case, it was an eight-day trial where they gave them four days of cocoa or four days placebo, a washout, and then they swapped. So each person got the cocoa no matter what. There was an overall 12 hour decrease in their systolic blood pressure, a significant three hour decrease in their systolic blood pressure, and their overall arterial stiffness decreased. So they were able to actually have more flexible arteries. Why is it about having chocolate in the morning? Well, the big thing with chocolate in the morning is the potential for improving insulin resistance. So there's some evidence to suggest that by having chocolate in the morning, you improve insulin sensitivity, and we'll unpack some of the data here in just a minute. But when you do that in the morning, you put yourself in a more opportune spot to be able to use nutrients better, right? If you can 
increase in a short-term fashion insulin sensitivity, then you are going to be more receptive to nutrients, more receptive to carbohydrates, and be more glucose tolerant. And the study that I'll reference in a minute actually looks at glucose intolerant people, people that were intolerant to glucose. So when they would have glucose, their blood sugar would spike and they would have obvious insulin resistance. So all these things we're talking about all coincide, which we'll explain in a minute. I put a link down below. There's a company called Verso. You've heard me talk about them before because they had nicotinamide mononucleotide and them in. They've got some really cool products. They came out with a product called Morning Being, which is sort of a caffeine alternative in a way that has, and still technically has cocoa in it, but it has cocoa. So it's got all the polyphenols, it's got the flavanols, it's got the epicatechin, which is everything we've been talking about in this video. But then in addition to that, it also has moringa leaf, which is one of the most antioxidant and nutrient rich foods that you could consume. So moringa, cocoa, it's sweetened with allulose, which can help modulate blood sugar in itself. It's got Reb M stevia in it as well. And then they also put some potassium, magnesium, and a little bit of sodium in it too, in really good quality forms. So it's a really good way to kind of start the day if you don't want to be bringing in caffeine and coffee on board. I've tried it out personally, and I find that I get quite a boost from it, and it works as a really good pre-workout for me because I'm getting the vasodilation that comes from the epicatechin and the subsequent nitric oxide release in my body. So because it converts to nitric oxide, I get more blood flow, more tissue perfusion. So it's what I'm looking for as someone trying to build muscle and stay lean. But also just if someone wants to start their day and have an elevated mood and get more blood flow and kind of take control of some of these metabolic markers and maybe they even improve insulin resistance, that's a cool thing to look at. So that link is down below. That is a special discount link as well. So check it out, top line of the description, underneath this video. I back Verso all the way. They're a good company. It's always had tremendous products. I know the owners super well, good quality, down to earth people. So that link is down below. So the study was published in Journal Nutrition though. And this is particularly interesting. It was a pretty good randomized control trial. And what they did is they took a look at people that had glucose intolerance and they gave them either dark chocolate or they gave them white chocolate, straight up. They had them do this for 15 days. They consumed this for 15 days, and then another washout period, and then rinse, repeat, swap groups. So everyone got the dark chocolate, everyone got the white chocolate when it all was said and done. What they found is that only the dark chocolate group, only the dark chocolate group had a reduction in insulin resistance, had an increase in insulin sensitivity, an increase in their glucose tolerance, and they also had an improvement in beta cell function. So they were able to quite literally have their pancreas produce insulin better. Now, all of this probably as a result of reducing oxidative stress. Cocoa is by and large coming in repeat after repeat after repeat, one of the most potent antioxidants that we could have. And I don't know why it still gets a bad rap, maybe because of the oxalates, but it is powerful and it doesn't have to have a bunch of sugar combined with it. So when you look at the reduction in oxidative stress and the increase in blood flow, you have this synergistic effect. So now you have the pancreatic beta cells producing more insulin, which is good, and you have more blood flow delivering that insulin to a cell. So this synergistic, ultimately compounding effect that could make it so that, wow, this actually improves metabolic health. And it's all coming from something as simple as chocolate that also tastes really darn good. The next one we have to talk about is one that is pretty darn important, especially as we get older. And no matter where you stand in the cholesterol discussion, I still think that we do look at LDL and we see, okay, in most people, we could equate high LDL with poor metabolic and poor cardiovascular health. Does that mean that a healthy person with higher LDL is truly unhealthy because of that? That's not what I'm saying. I think when we look at the large cohorts, we see the data and the data is pretty clear. But when we look at this study, the impacts on dark chocolate, like why, are, why isn't this more front page news? So this was published in Clinical Nutrition. It was 10 trials, a large meta-analysis, and they looked at dark chocolate consumption in just a small amount. They found that dark chocolate reduced LDL cholesterol significantly, reduced total cholesterol significantly, ultimately led to less oxidized LDL, which leads to less foam cells being produced, Foam cells are what will ultimately cause the problem long-term. So by reducing the oxidation and the oxidation of the LDL specifically, you reduce the formation of the foamy cells that cause a problem. In addition to this, chocolate seems to regulate the enzymes 
that not only help clear excess cholesterol, but also can help with the proper formation of cholesterols. So possibly more HDL and less LDL. You're actually changing things enzymatically. So the more and more research that comes out with chocolate, like what would I recommend that you do? First of all, if you like dark chocolate, yes, the best time to have it is in the morning. There is a small amount of just energy that comes from it. Theobromine can also amp some people up. So maybe it's not good at night for some people, but dark chocolate in the morning is something that I've started doing on the days that I do eat before my workouts. It's a way for me to, in a weird way, I kind of feel like if I have a little chunk of dark chocolate too, I feel like I want to work it off and I want to kind of work harder, which is interesting. But I've also messed around with Verso's morning being, and I feel like it's a nice pre-workout for me. I don't take a lot of pre-workout supplements because I don't really like them. I don't like the artificial stuff, but I feel like cocoa, I get the pump, I get the vascularity that I want without a lot of the negative effects. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.